Well, you are absolutely gonna love this technique for mocking up your graphics onto t-shirts or really any article of clothing using some incredible blending options and of course, smart objects. It all begins with creating a rectangle and converting that rectangle to a smart object. Transform the smart object to match the perspective of the shirt as best you're able. Then we're gonna create and apply a displacement map distortion filter to that smart object. Then we can load any artwork we want inside of the smart object and save it. Then simply use the blend if sliders, maybe a little blurring noise, some things like that to make it all look realistic. And then finally, a saturation mask to match colors and a regular mask to complete the mock-up. And then guess what? Replace the artwork inside that smart object and everything simply automatically updates with all of your blending applied to the new artwork just like that. Now, this video is sponsored by friends of the channel Envato Elements. If you want to deliver better projects faster to your clients, go check out their incredible stock library, everything from photos and graphics to stock audio, stock video, brushes, typography, WordPress templates, and so much more. Unlimited downloads for one monthly price. Use that link in the description. I'll give them a little plug later. But for now, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. We want to apply some graphics to this t-shirt. I'll show you the graphics that I'm working with here. It's this graphic and it's this graphic. By the way, got these two graphics and got the photos that we're gonna be working on uh, today from Envato Elements, who is sponsoring this video, of course. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I wanna show you a technique that's gonna work on light t-shirts, dark t-shirts, black t-shirts, brown t-shirts. I can sound like Dr. Seuss here describing all the different types of t-shirts that this will work on. It all begins with a simple concept here, creating a rectangle uh, roughly the size of the area that will be uh, area into which we can place artwork. Uh, this is sort of the safe zone. Uh, and the idea is we create a rectangle, we right click on the rectangle and say, hey, convert this rectangle to a smart object. If that's a little off screen, I can go layer, uh, smart objects, convert to smart object. And this is now a placeholder or a, not even a placeholder, sort of a, um, container into which we'll be able to load artwork. So if we apply a, different, a bunch of different effects to the smart object, well, guess what? Any artwork we then load into the smart object will have all of that stuff uh, affecting it and uh, effectively blending it into this t-shirt. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this, um, this shape and we're gonna transform it by going edit free transform and we can scale it, we can rotate it a little bit. So maybe we'll rotate it just a touch and then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say uh, distort this a little um, and let's just kind of, you know, we're gonna try to match the perspective of the shirt a little bit. You don't wanna go too crazy with this. You can start to make all your artwork look squished and, and ill proportioned, uh, but something like this will probably be fine. Uh, that's cool. I'm gonna shut that artwork layer off for a second because we wanna go ahead and create our displacement map, which we're gonna apply to the artwork in just a second. And actually, before I do that, I wanna just throw a layer mask on this artwork layer just to have it there for later, stash it away before I forget about it. This is particularly useful, like maybe somebody has their hand up in front of the shirt if you need to mask the artwork around the hand and then just general blending later on, you'll see. I'm gonna select the background layer and I'm gonna use the hotkey Command or Control J just to duplicate this and I can name the layer Displace or whatever. And then we'll go Image Adjustments Desaturate right here. Uh, just a nice black and white layer. And then we're gonna save this PSD as, we're gonna go File, Save As, and I'm just gonna save this as Displace Navy Shirt. All right, and displace, how about this place, navy shirt and hit save and then hit okay, cool. I can just delete this displaced layer and then we could save our document as our normal shirt mock-up, whatever. I'll, I'll work in this here uh, for now. Uh, let's go ahead and turn our artwork layer back on and begin adding some artwork to this. We do this by double clicking that layer thumbnail. So double click that, we just have our black rectangle. Well, of course, we don't want the black rectangle. That was just the shape we created to convert to a smart object. So I'll shut that layer off and this is our artboard for our art. So let's go over to Illustrator and I'm gonna take this really colorful uh, artwork here. Just grab it, Command or Control C, copy it. Jump back over to Photoshop and let's paste it here into this document, Command or Control V. And Photoshop is gonna say, hey look, you're pasting in this vector artwork. How do you wanna do this? I'm gonna do it just the ultra destructive easy way and just paste it as pixels. Um, I'm just assuming that this is my finished artwork. I don't need to worry about coming back to it and tweaking it very much later. So I'm gonna paste it as pixels. There's the artwork. I'm gonna commit the change, cool. 
So we've got this artwork, it's huge, it's the size of our area. We might wanna size it down, we can do that later. Uh, for now, notice this little uh, asterisk star up there. That means that the .psb, which is the sort of Photoshop file within a Photoshop file, our smart object here, um, that file has not been saved and thus it is not updated in our main PSD. So if we hit Command or Control S to save it and then we jump back to the main PSD, well, look at that. We have our artwork now in place on the shirt. Problem is, it looks very, very unrealistic because we haven't yet blended it at all. Uh, so let's begin this process of blending. In fact, I'm gonna come in here. I wanna just make it a little bit smaller. So Command or Control T to uh, free transform this. I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option and just scale down my artwork a little bit. Let me bump it up to the top of the uh, artwork container area, commit the change, Command or Control S to save it, jump back out to the t-shirt, and there's the artwork, cool. Alrighty, let's talk about our sponsor for today. They are Envato Elements. If you're a designer, a photographer, a digital artist, a graphic designer, video editor, you just wanna look more professional and faster and deliver better stuff to your clients in general, our sponsor is perfect for you. They're Envato Elements. It's a subscription service that allows you to browse and download millions of different design elements, stock photos, stock video, audio templates, PSDs, InDesign files, brushes, patterns, fonts, WordPress, website themes, and so much more. Uh, when you get access to Envato Elements, it's just like having the world's largest design toolbox added to your workflow, bam, instantaneously. Uh, you're practically losing money by not subscribing. I'm just saying that, uh, but it is a very useful tool. Uh, just think of the ways that you'll be able to speed up your current design process and deliver better finished products to your clients. You can offer little perks that are gonna make it seem like you're moving heaven and earth for your clients. So check out Envato using the link in the description of this video. Grab a subscription today. Uh, if you subscribe using my link down there, you help support the channel, uh, which is just helpful for everything. So thank you for watching this video and thank you to Envato for sponsoring this video now. Back to the show. Now what we can do is begin our blending process. This is gonna begin with displacing and blurring and maybe adding some grain to the artwork. Um, so let's begin with the displace option. I'm gonna zoom in on this so you can really see it. Now, this t-shirt is kind of like an athletic style t-shirt. So it's got these really strong horizontal sort of grains. Um, some of the other documents here uh, that I've been working on, let's go with uh, maybe this one here. Um, you can see here in this finished product, this t-shirt is more of just a standard t-shirt uh, texture. So the, the reason I bring this up is because because there's such a sharp, fine uh, texture on this fabric, displace can really get kind of wild on a, a t-shirt like this very quickly. So we want to be kind of uh, careful, but it is also an advantage to using the displacement filter on a smart object because we can always go and edit it. So let's go filter, distort, displace. And here, I want to keep the scaling pretty low. If we go really high on the scale, it's going to go wonky on us pretty quick. So I might go with like 4-4, four, four, uh, maybe 3-3. Three, three. Uh, there's some times where you might want to go real high on the horizontal scale, maybe like 10. Uh, sometimes you want to go 10-10. Ten, ten. It all depends. You can go in here and kind of play around with this. Um, in fact, maybe I'll try 10-4 just because it sounds cool. I'm going to hit OK. And here you can see I have the displace.psd. Notice it's not gonna let me load a JPEG. So you gotta save your displacement map as a PSD. Displace navy shirt.psd. I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna load it and look at what it did to the artwork. It's making it kind of, whoa, difficult to look at. And you can see all those edges are really going wacky because there's that strong texture. It's just a little bit too much. So I'm gonna double click on displace and maybe let's go 410 and I'll hit okay. We're gonna have to reload the displacement map. There it is. And we can see now it's giving us a strong effect, but in the other direction, it's still just too much. So double click on the word displace again, and let's go maybe like three, three, hit okay, load that displacement map, and that's much better. I can turn the filter on and off, and you can see we just get a nice effect, like the artwork is really beginning to sink into the fabric a little bit, exactly what we want. Uh, but it's also gonna like tweak and bend the artwork along with the shadows and contours of the wrinkles on the article of clothing. All right, I'm gonna zoom in just a touch more. We're gonna go back and we're gonna apply blur, Gaussian blur. We're gonna go really fine on the Gaussian blur, something like half a pixel, maybe one pixel. It all depends on how sharp and in focus the shirt or article of clothing is onto which you're placing your artwork. And then finally, sometimes a little noise can be useful uh, just to blend um, 
So something, meh, three, four, five percent. You don't have to go crazy on this and hit OK. Uh, just give a little bit more realism. Um, now that we've done that, we want to go ahead and use some blending options. These blending options that we want to use are primarily the blend if sliders. You can get to the blend if sliders by going layer, layer style, blending options. So what I want to be focused on here is I want to lessen the intensity of the artwork in the shadows of the wrinkles. So I'm going to target the underlying layer, specifically the blacks in the underlying layer, and I'm just going to fade away the artwork. Remember, we're applying this blending option to our artwork smart object. So I'm going to hold down my alter option key and just click that handle to split it. So it's going to be a nice fade. And I'm just going to drag this over to the right um, quite a bit, probably into the 80s maybe, maybe up all the way to 100, somewhere around there, uh, until I just get a nice uh, you can see what it's doing. It's just really going to take that artwork and begin blending it into the fabric itself, but respecting the highlights versus the shadows. And then we could do the same thing with, uh, so there we, we wanted to target the shadows on the underlying layer, which would be the t-shirt. Uh, now what if we say, hey, the bright stuff on this artwork is just too much. Well, we could split the white handle, the brights on the current layer, and knock those down. Now, I don't know that I want to do that that much. Maybe I'll just take a little bit off of them. Uh, and this is going to all depend entirely on A, the shirt that you're applying your artwork to, and B, the artwork that you're applying to that shirt. So understanding what's going on here is kind of sort of essential. Uh, so that, that's probably fine, something like so. We'll hit OK. And then we're going to apply a curves adjustment layer to the artwork as well as a vibrance adjustment layer. So curves adjustment layer, vibrance adjustment layer. Um, now, if I start playing with the curves adjustment, it's going to affect the entire image, not just our artwork. I want it to affect only our artwork. So I'm going to select that curves adjustment layer, hold down shift, and also select the vibrance adjustment layer. And I'm going to use the hotkey command option G. That's control alt G on the PC. What this does, is it's going to take the effects of our adjustment layer and apply them only to the layer that they're clipped to. And right now they are clipped to the artwork layer. So if I go back to my curves and I say, hey, make it really dark, you can see it's only affecting the artwork and not the shirt and the entire photo around the artwork. Very, very helpful uh, in an image like this. And here we might want to do something like reduce contrast. So boost the black point and drop the white point a little bit. Something like that might be nice. Then you can play with maybe darken it a little bit. Cool. Kind of interesting. Uh, one of the other things that can be helpful, and this all depends on the image. Again, there's a lot of uh, subjectiveness to mocking up artwork. Um, sometimes I like to apply a saturation mask. And I do that by using a selective color adjustment layer. And what you do is in each of the color channels, you reduce the blacks to negative 100%. But then each of the tonal values, you boost blacks to plus 100%. So you would go through like each, you know, white, neutral, black, and make them all like that. Now, I have a preset sat mask, which is saturation mask, which does this for me. You can see each of the color channels reduced to negative 100. Um, and, you know, same for green and so on and so forth. I, it's also set to the absolute, not the relative uh, mode. And what we have here is uh, what, what's called a saturation mask. And what we're looking at is the, the stuff here, if I open up my vibrance adjustment layer, the stuff that is more saturated ends up looking bright. Whereas if there's not any saturation, see if I remove all the saturation, it's solid black. Um, so what we can do is say like, all right, whoa, our artwork is way brighter than the shirt it's on. Therefore, we know that the artwork is going to be super saturated compared to the shirt that it's on. Sometimes that matters. Sometimes it doesn't. Typically, the darker the shirt, the more saturation you can get away with. Uh, but we could we could begin uh, just by turning this on and saying like, hey, I'm going to reduce my uh, I'm going to reduce my vibrance a little bit, but boost the saturation a little bit maybe and just see kind of what you can get away with and what might look decent. Uh, on the image and then remove the, sat uh, the selective color saturation mask. And there we have just done a little bit more blending, right? So we're just changing the way some of the colors look to try to make it look more realistic on our model. Now there's two last quick things that I tend to like to do with a lot of my uh, mock-ups. And this goes for any mock-up, even if it's like a sign or something. Uh, what I like to try to do is come down to the original uh, artwork and use the rectangular marquee tool. Just make a big old selection around kind of the whole area that could possibly ever contain mocked up artwork and hit command or control J, right? And then you're going to drag this up above all of your artwork, right? So we're covering up the artwork, but what this is going to be is just top tones. 
Um, and I would remove the saturation from this by going image adjustments, desaturate. The hotkey is also command shift U. That's control shift U on the PC, whatever. Uh, and then we're going to clip this as well to our layer stack because we only want the top tones to be on top of the, any artwork that we apply to our image. So command, sh uh, command option G, that would be control alt G on the PC. You can see it's just this bizarre gray looking thing. Uh, and then you're going to apply the uh, overlay or soft light blend mode. So here I'll probably go overlay. And you could also take this top tones layer. Uh, what's happening when we apply overlay is it's just to, using the lightness or the, the brightness values of the that layer to affect the artwork below. So basically we're saying, hey, all the shadow areas make them a little darker. Any of the, the uh, bright areas make them a little brighter. But sometimes if your shirt is either too bright or too dark, it can really mess up the artwork. So one of the things you can do is select your top tones layer and go image, adjust, adjustments. You can apply a levels adjustment. Um, it might be a good idea to convert this to a smart object. We're not going to do it here, uh, but just if you want future editability and then go levels. And here you can see if I make the, uh, just the top tones really dark, it's going to adversely affect the artwork, make it look really bad. Same thing if it's super duper bright, right? We're just going to make the artwork look wacky. Um, so I'm going to just reset this. Uh, what I tend to do is just if there's an area that's too dark, maybe I would just, all right, I need my grays to be a little bit brighter, but I also want to just make the shadows a little bit darker, uh, but I want the bulk of my top tones to be a little brighter to make the artwork look proper. So you can see there's before and there's after. We're just really sinking it in to the shirt. Now, of course, just like you could with any other layer, you can reduce the opacity of this a little bit if you think it's too strong, or we could even double click the layer and enter into our blending options and do exactly what we did before. We could say, hey, um, uh, current layer, I want you to get rid of some of the areas that you're affecting in terms of the, the lightest parts, right? So get rid of some of the, the light grays and the, even the medium grays and just leave the shadowy dark bits, right? And if we just do a before and after, you can see it's just taken away some of those brighter areas that might look a little bit uh, less than natural. And I might also just tone down the overall opacity as well. Again, we want our adjustments to be subtle, but when applied together, make a big difference. So that's pretty cool. Um, one final thing that I tend to like to do, we have this layer mask that I had mentioned, if you have somebody holding their hands or a, you know, a laptop in their arm and it's covering up part of the shirt and the graphic is sliding underneath it, you would mask that away. You just paint with black on this mask and you can hide parts of the artwork, but you can also use a brush tool, set it to like an opacity of 10%, paint with a foreground color black, and you can come in here and just make the artwork not quite as visible on uh, or in the shadowy areas. And that will just tend to blend in your artwork even more. And I'm just using a mouse here. Uh, you could go in and use, uh, like if you've got a graphics tablet, something like that. And then sometimes areas that might just look a little bit too bright, just go in and tone them down a little bit, right? I don't think you should be quite that bright there. So I'm gonna tone you down right down here. Maybe you shouldn't quite be that bright. It just doesn't look right. Something looks off. Or maybe if you wanna use a like a, a grunge brush, there's plenty of those and Vado's got a ton of them. Um, and, and do something where maybe you introduce some kind of texture and weathered uh, pattern to your artwork that you're mocking up on the t-shirt. I still think this is a little bit too uh, a little bit too much saturation here. So I'm just going to reduce the saturation overall a little bit. Something like so. All right. Now we've done all this blending work, but let's say we do this and we have seven different pieces of artwork we want to apply to our t-shirts. Well, this is where this particular technique is awesome because all we have to do is double click on our artwork thumbnail go back into here, we can shut this artwork off. And uh, in fact, if I save this and go back to my mock-up, you're gonna see, well, not this mock-up, let's close this mock-up. Uh, I can go back here and all the artwork is gone. But if I go back to Illustrator and I have this sort of little mouse holding a piece of cheese, and this is our other piece, uh, we can copy this. We can go back over to Photoshop. We can go into our artwork, a smart object, Command or Control V to paste it. Again, we'll just paste it as pixels, whatever. We're not gonna go too crazy here. Move it where we think it should kind of be vertically on the t-shirt, commit the change, save it, Command or Control S, go back to our artwork, and you can see the mouse with the cheese has been added. Now here, I might wanna just remove the saturation adjustment. I kinda of think this looks better with a lot of saturation. Uh, you could you could uh, maybe try shutting off the curves adjustment layer. I don't like the way that looks, it looks wacky. Uh, you could select 
and adjust uh, the displacement effect. Maybe the Gaussian blur is just doing bad things to that particular piece of artwork. You could shut that off. You can come in here and do all sorts of different things. Uh, maybe you want to see what it looks like without the top tones applied, or maybe the top tones are really doing a lot of good for this artwork. Uh, maybe the artwork needs to be even closer to the top of your sort of graphics container. Move it up, save the smart object, go back, and everything is automatically updated. All those effects, the mask on this smart object, all of it is there. You can see this mask is applied to this artwork just the same as it was to the other artwork. So we can very quickly go in and make changes. I'll show you here. This doesn't just work with a dark navy shirt. Uh, we did this here. I showed you the black shirt. Um, here's a, a white shirt. White is always going to look a little, uh, a, a bit different than a dark shirt. Dark shirts just tend to work better in mock-ups. Uh, but if we come in here, we could turn on more colorful artwork, save that and close it. And you can see just like that, boom, the entire mock-up has changed. Uh, I'll close this. Uh, we have some other options here. I've got this guy in a red shirt. It's now, now admittedly, this is not the greatest mock-up. I didn't spend that much time on it, but you can see he's got his hand in front of it. And down here, uh, what I did was I just simply masked around his hand with the phone using that little layer mask. Uh, so we were able to do that. Cool. Uh, and there's just all sorts of different, uh, all sorts of different options here. We got this woman here. We applied this artwork to her shirt. And it's the same thing where you could go in and swap the artwork out quickly and easily. And that is it. You can see lots of cool techniques in Photoshop. I hope this video has been helpful and fun. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you liked it. And I'll see you in the next one.